This is a short video about the beta distribution. Uh, the day I talked about the different distributions we were going to use in this course, I said that the beta distribution is a distribution for continuous random variables, but the range of values uh, the random variable can take is constrained between 0 and 1. So the beta distribution is perfect for modeling proportions. So let me give you an example. Uh, of the beta distribution and how uh, the results of a survey or a poll can be used to uh, define the parameters of the beta distribution. The beta distribution has two parameters, uh, alpha and beta, and we're going to connect those parameters to uh, the, the successes and failures in a survey or a poll. So let me give you a, a, a simple example. So suppose we work in a city that has 100,000 households. So these are the households in a given city. And, well, some of those households are going to buy my product, so I'm going to have a, a market share, let's call it, because it's not measuring money, but it's measuring customers. The market share is the percentage of households that will buy my product. So let's assume that, that uh, the household is exclusive uh, it only buys the products from one company. Uh, so, I don't know, let's say that the market share is 25%. So what that means is that my customers, the number of people who buy my product, are going to be equal to the number of households in the city times the market share. So I have 25,000 people who buy my product. Uh, let's say that... Um, that each household buys four units per period. So these are units bought by each household. And let's say that the unit price is equal to $250, okay? Let's say that the unit variable cost is equal to $50. So these are dollars. So let's make them dollars. Okay, so what are the total units sold? Units sold are going to be, uh, well, sorry, units sold are going to be four units per household, and then I have 25,000 customers. So I'm going to sell 100,000 units. So sales in dollars are going to be units sold times the unit price of $250. So I'm selling uh, $25 million uh, per period. So let's say that the fixed cost are gonna be 18 million. So 18 million. One, two, three. These are dollars again. Uh, so we have sales, we have fixed costs, or have variable costs. Variable costs. Variable cost is going to be equal to unit variable cost, right? Times, um, times, times what? Unit variable goods times units sold. Okay. So here I have five million. So profits finally is going to be equal to sales minus uh, fixed cost minus variable cost. So no taxes for simplicity. So I have a profit of $2 million. Uh, so this is this is the model. Uh, this is a deterministic model. There's nothing random here. Uh, how, do we, how do we transform this deterministic model into a simulation model? Well, we will identify sources of uncertainty. And here I have pretty much under control everything except the market share. And the market share is a, a fraction, okay? It's the fraction of households in the city that buy my product. But, I, but I'm just guessing that market share, let's say that I'm opening uh, a new uh, store in this city, so I don't know yet what my market share is gonna be. So let's say that after operating for a while, I test the markets. I, I, I pay for, 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 for a study, from a marketing uh, research company. So they go ahead and they conduct their survey. They ask 200 people, 
in the survey, and 50 of them say, yes, I buy the product. Uh, 50 people buy my product. Uh, buy my product. And the rest, 150, buy my competitors. Competitors. Product. Okay, so these are the results of the survey. So how can I tie the results of this survey with uh, my simulation model? It turns out that there is a nice result that says that we can model the market share as a random variable using these two parameters. These are, from my point of view, these are successes. Successes. These are success. This is a success. And these are failures. Well, I can define a beta distribution with parameters successes plus one, failures plus one, and then uh, I can make this number a random variable. So let me try it. So let's go to at risk and let's say market share. Uh, let's define a distribution so I can write it risk beta. And the first parameter is going to be success plus one, failure plus one. And I'll close. And I'll show you that distribution. So the expected uh, or the mean of that distribution is 25, 24. Uh, so let me show you the distribution. See, I had the mean 25, 25, but there's some dispersion around that mean. See, the standard deviation is 3%. So I can go, see, as low as was a minimum and maximum, they can be uh, 0 or 1. But once we simulate, you'll see uh, that it's very difficult that I get to 0 or I get to 1. Okay, so this is my random, my random variable. And let's say I'm interested in measuring profits. That's going to that's gonna, that's gonna be my output. So that's the output, profits. And I want the simulation to understand the risks uh, of not making any money or losing money. So let's say I've run the simulation for, uh, let's say, 10,000 times, and then I run my simulation. So, so this, this is the variable that I'm interested in now. So what is the probability that I make less than zero? What is the probability that I lose money? So that's zero. Zero, zero, zero. So there's 18% probability that I'm going to lose money. Okay, what's the probability that I make more than $6 million? In that case, we erase this, 6.4%. So I have my distribution for profits when the source of uncertainty, the source of risk is a proportion. And the beta distribution is the appropriate distribution for modeling proportions. Let me do one last thing. Suppose the survey was based not on 200 people, but on 20. And I get the same proportions. So 20, I get five people said they buy my product, and 15 people buy, say they buy somebody else's. What do you think is gonna happen uh, to the distribution of profits? Stop the video, think, and then continue the video. Okay, let's, let's, let's check. Okay, let's run the simulation now. And Okay, we can check. So what are the things that can happen with the proportion? See, the, the uncertainty increases. Well, if I have a survey that is based on fewer people, the uncertainty is bigger about the parameter market share. And the uncertainty has to be bigger too about profits. So what's the probability that I lose money? 32% versus 18 before. What's the probability that I make more than six? 36%, okay?